Coming up, insufficient airlift, a major concern in the family islands. And later on in sports, a Class C sloop continues to dominate the regatta circuit. The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition, starts now. Now in HD. presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Everyday. Government is about to make another big step in its redevelopment of the Air Traffic Control Department. Good evening everyone, I'm Kendino Knowles and welcome to the weekend edition of The Bahamas Tonight. Well, Transport and Aviation Minister Glennis Hannah Martin telling ZNS News that government is about to sign a contract this week for the construction of a new TRACON building. That's the tower where all the air traffic services are executed. She's not disclosed the amount of that contract just yet or the firm that will be used. We have one now, but there'll be a new building. And additionally, the new sites for the site for the radar is being prepared out of this contract. And so the work for the ra the work for the installation of the radar is well advanced and training is well advanced. And by December of this year, we if, if all goes well and all is going so well, going well thus far, we will have a state-of-the-art radar now governing our air traffic services in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Now, the announcement of this new tower comes as the Aviation Ministry recently signed a contract with a company out of Spain called Indra for the acquisition and installation of that state-of-the-art digital radar, which you just heard the minister talk about there. Well, according to her, this new radar is going to have expansive range, much more than anything the country has ever had. In fact, personnel in the department have traveled to Spain for training, as well as Indra has sent some of its people here to supplement the training effort. Now, just a little bit of history for you to better understand the situation. Civil Aviation is currently utilizing an ASR-8 radar, which in terms of technology is behind the 8-ball. The former government acquired an $8 million ASR-9 radar during the period 1997 to 2002, which was later reportedly found to be a lemon. In fact, Hannah Martin says the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration basically described that radar as a Cadillac without a dashboard. But the radar that's since been acquired is expected to take the country's aviation industry well into the 21st century. The good thing with what we're doing now is that we're going to use, we're going to rehabilitate that, AS, that, that, that particular ASR-9 radar and use that for um, training for radar technicians. But in terms of radar use, it doesn't have, it, we're not going to be able to use it for that. So we're trying to get some use from it and any parts that we're able to, to use from it. Um, we will take that also. So what this moving forward now, we did this um, very differently. We obtained the advice of International Civil Aviation Organization. They were consultants with us um, so that we had, we believe, um, the best advice in acquiring this, this particular radar. It will mean increased range, cutting edge technology, and um, really taking the Bahamas in the 21st century in terms of radar um, technology. So this is, this is a very, very important step. And it comes within the context of being set back. And, and so we're recovering and recovering in a wonderful way. So. Now, meanwhile, during a tour of Mayaguana yesterday, Aviation Minister Hannah Martin disclosed that the Southern Island is a jewel of the Bahamas. And she strongly believes that insufficient airlift has not only stifled that island's economy, but forced residents to migrate to other islands in search of a better way of life. Airlift is critical. I, I agree with, with Minister Gray that, you know, that he thinks that with economic activity you would have enhanced airlift. But I'd like to also say, though, when you have a vibrant airlift um, system throughout a country, that, that stimulates economic activity. And um, we have a homecoming coming up in a few weeks in, in, in um, Betsy Bay. People have apprehensions if they think that the, they're coming in a small plane. If they, if they feel that they're going, to, they're going to come in an aircraft that can accommodate larger numbers, that's going to bring some real economic activity to Meguana. It's going to stimulate some good things and people who come from this place and who can't wait to get home. 
Now from the crime beat, police need your help tonight with any information on a shooting incident that has left a 20 year old man in hospital. According to reports, it was shortly after 6.30 p.m. when police learned that the man had been shot on Dorset Street in Fox Hill. When they arrived on the scene, police met the victim suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He was taken to hospital where police confirm he is in critical condition. Authorities are appealing to anyone with any information on this incident to contact police at 919 or Crime Stoppers at 328 TIPS or in the Family Islands at 242-300-8476. And a 28-year-old man of Sandilands Village Road spending the weekend in custody after he was arrested for stealing from a vehicle and possession of a stolen vehicle yesterday. Eastern Division officers were tipped off shortly after 11 o'clock yesterday morning and went to the suspect's home to make the arrest where they also found the stolen vehicle identified by police as a silver Honda Fit. The suspect, whom police confirmed was wearing a court-issued electronic monitoring device, is expected to appear in court later this week to face formal charges. Meantime, Eastern Division officers recovered a 1997 Honda CRV that was reported stolen back on January 31st on Sandilands Village Road around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Well, remember 16 weddings on 16 islands in one day? If you don't, it's a major promotion by the Ministry of Tourism and it's back. Tourism Minister Obi Wilchcombe launched this year's initiative in New York this weekend where he told seasoned travel writers and business partners that the country wants to attract even more couples in the future. The 16 weddings, 16 islands, one priceless day invitation was extended to engaged couples throughout the United States and will allow them to learn about the 16 major islands of the Bahamas online then use the selected website to enter to win a destination wedding on one of those islands. Minister Wilshkom thanked the dozens of top New York writers who attended the event. Now, the launch coincided with the unveiling of a billboard that will be displayed throughout the year in New York City's Times Square as well as on social media. The Islands of the Bahamas also launched a new romance trip planning wizard on Bahamas16IslandsWeddings.com. It's expected to enhance a couple's initial research experience for the perfect Bahamas wedding. Well, officials of the Water and Sewerage Corporation recently signed a $1 million contract to develop a 20-year national wastewater plan for the Bahamas. As part of the Inter-American Development Bank's loan to improve the water and sewerage services and capabilities, WSC recently signed the million-dollar contract with Aiden Holdings Limited to address water collection, treatment, and disposal needs, including technical, economic, social, environmental, and financial analysis for the proposed works. Now, this contract is expected to last 12 months with the improvement and upgrades identified in the immediate term to be completed within the next two to three years. Well, 4G LTE, the fastest data mobile service in the world, is now active in Nassau, Abaco, Grand Bahama, and Eleuthero. But what about the rest of the islands? Well, you won't be left out. BTC Senior Public Relations Manager Jerome Sawyer talks about when the lightning fast technology will make it to your part of the country, as well as the integrity of the new cellular network. Throughout, I think, um, the first four months of this year, we're going to bring a lot more cell sites on online to be able to accommodate the increase in traffic that we anticipate and like with everything else you know um, as the network grows you'll be able to get more capacity in more islands how soon LT will make it to the islands to the rest of the islands we expect that um, by the end of 2014 just as many islands um, that have access uh, now will have access to, to LTE so by the end of the year definitely we expect LTE to be in full effect across the islands of the Bahamas well, the Bahamas Humane Society held its annual Animal Fun Day at Botanical Gardens today, giving them the opportunity to frolic and compete against others for top prizes. The event is an important fundraiser for the organization that also uses the opportunity to encourage more Bahamians to adopt a pet. With the island burdened with a huge stray dog population, adoption coordinator Fiona Fraser says Bahamians should forego buying and visit the Humane Society where they can adopt a pet for a small fee. If you come and get one of our pets, one of our pets, they are spayed and neutered. If possible, before they leave, even our small puppies, we now are able to do spay puppies at 10, 12 weeks. And um, of course, we just had our Operation Pot Cake. We went out and we did a lot of spaying and neutering in the, uh, the communities. And we are seeing a knock-on effect and certainly with 
with our guys is like don't show up, adopt, please. This we have every kind of possible dog. We have, uh, you know, mixes. We have beautiful paw cakes, which are awesome dogs to have. You know, they're easy to take care of. They don't need grooming. If you have a short hair paw cake, um, you know, and they're pretty hardy dogs. So we we love the paw cake. And then of course we have tons of little Shih Tzu house type dogs that get surrendered. So if you are looking, please don't buy. Uh, come down and adopt. Now, President of the Bahamas Humane Society, Kim Arana, says funds raised allow the organization to continue to meet its mandate. And this year, funds are also designated to a special case. His name is Bingo, who was hit by a car. The family could not afford to give him any help. And we found him during Operation Potcake. He's now in a foster home. He's had one surgery, and we're raising money for the next surgery. And then he can go back to his home, and the lady is making sure that he can't get out of her yard. So these are all the sort of things we do at the Humane Society. Well, when the weekend edition continues, a new resort reopens for business in Exuma. We've got that story and more after this short break.